Good morning from Munich, Germany. I have to uh, talk a little bit quieter for this video because we're here at what is today a very large housing complex for students here in Munich who attend the university. But uh, all of the structures that we're going to take a look at today were originally constructed in the uh, early 70s for one purpose and that purpose was uh, the 1972 Olympic Games which were held here the summer games in Munich Germany and uh, that was a time maybe you remember when the Olympics was a big deal and uh, you know people really watched the Olympics they wanted to know how was their country doing in this uh, era which was sort of characterized by this struggle between East and West, capitalism and the Eastern Bloc always kind of met for this uh, event. 1972 was no exception. And uh, that Olympics, however, was also known for something uh, very different and quite tragic and we will uh, make our way eventually to the site of where that uh, tragedy, that Olympic tragedy all began. A little building called Connolly Strasse 31, where um, something which really overshadowed those Olympics took place. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Here on the busy edge of the Olympic Village, I wanted to uh, just give you a quick look of the BMW operation that goes on across the street here. There's all kinds of uh, BMW buildings right along the edge of the Olympic Village, including one down there that's supposed to look like, I guess, some kind of um, cylinder. It's off in the distance and behind those trees. So let's head back into the village, get you a look at some of the signage so they let us know all of the different things which are or are not allowed on the grounds of the village. And you can maybe see at the very top there, that's a sign depicting a guy picking up dog poop. So leave it to the Germans to have some way of depicting every possible thing including picking up dog poop because as the sign will uh, remind you we need to keep the Olympic Village clean and clear of dog poop and um, I'm going to be in favor of that <laughs> that rule they've got all kinds of uh, yellow I guess this must be some kind of uh, utility that gets carried above ground here. Occasionally you'll see that in more like in Eastern Germany where they had uh, put some of that stuff above ground. And it definitely adds a different atmosphere, sort of a, I don't know, utilitarian kind of uh, feel. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that since these uh, all this artistic stuff was put here. It was put here for us to get a peek at, hopefully, <laughs> without disturbing anybody that uh, might be living in these little places that are all just made of concrete. We've got some uh, interesting Olympic themed uh, painting here and I believe that it's down this little street that I noticed perhaps the most striking piece of artwork. I heard somebody talking in there and 
Where is he at? Must be right over here. I do see Popeye, but um, I do believe the star of the show is going to be right here. And The Simpsons was, um, I don't know if it's still popular in Germany today, but it used to be very common that you would see them on television and uh, voiced, of course, in German by different, uh, different voice actors. So it's a totally different sound to Homer and uh, you just have to get used to it, right? German people know Homer with a little different sound. <laughs> so. On a more serious note, we are now on officially Connolly Strasse, which goes underneath all these buildings. And I looked it up, apparently was named after an American athlete much earlier in history. And it was at the end of this street where we will find 31. The building number 31 is where the terrorist events that the games became most known for began. And all of that was done in kind of a strange backdrop for these Olympics because it was the first Olympics in Germany since the uh, games from the 1930s that were held in Berlin during the Nazi period. And of course, the German authorities here in 1972, along with the Olympic officials, really wanted to try to uh, downplay any kind of, I think we're going the wrong way here, downplay any kind of um, sort of appearance of militarism, police states, and that kind of stuff. So the security that was here at the village was more low key. You wouldn't see all kinds of uniforms or lots of guns and that kind of stuff. You would uh, kind of not notice the security, I guess, was the part of the idea. And as it turned out, it seems that there probably was not enough security here on site to uh, be able to really properly secure the village and the games more generally. And uh, it was about, well, it was over a week into the Olympics when these events unfolded here. And I believe it's right over here where we will find this building. Um, the Palestinian group called Black September climbed the uh, security fence around the village, got through the security perimeter, and came to building number 31 because that is where the um, Israeli Olympic team was being housed. And I came and just kind of found that location yesterday. And it is right at the top of these stairs here. At least the back side of the building is on this side and then we'll go around to the front as well. But right back here, behind these bushes and trees, that's building 31 where these um, terrorists broke into the building heavily armed and took uh, some of the uh, Israeli Olympic team hostage and during that process actually killed in this initial takeover of the building killed two of the uh, Olympic athletes so that's the the back of the building there what I'm calling the back and um, the German police initially we're going to try to rescue those hostages from the building here in the Olympic Village when it was realized at the last minute that there are so many other buildings around here, lots of people with cameras, and they were concerned that the operations of the German police and their rescue attempts would be broadcast on TV and that the terrorists would actually be able to see them on TV. So at the last minute, they abandoned that attempt to uh, to sort of go into the building and try to get these hostages out. 
And Black September was demanding two things. Uh, the first was a release of prisoners, Palestinian prisoners held by Israel. And the second thing they were demanding was the release of two German people who were leaders of what was sometimes called the Bader Meinhof Gang, officially known as the RAF or the Red Army Faction. And the RAF was a extreme leftist group. And so that's what Building 31 looks like today in this kind of narrow area. And we'll go down, get a look at uh, the plaque that they have at the front of the building as well. So as I mentioned, it was um, two of the hostages were killed here inside of the building. And then I'll spin the camera around here. You can see on the plaque as it looks today that there are 11 names. And uh, as mentioned, two of those people died here in the building. And then uh, nine, nine, the other nine were actually um, killed at a small airport just outside of Munich where they had sort of taken this whole thing and tried to get it away from the Olympic Village. And so they had basically convinced the um, convinced the hostage holders to board some helicopters and fly to this little airfield on the edge of Munich called Furstenfeldbruck. And that is where things really went very, very wrong. And basically, um, the, without getting into the details, the remaining nine hostages were killed there at the airport as the police tried to, um, tried to gain control of the situation and get those hostages released forcefully. And so it was a very sad and tragic end to these events at the 1972 Munich Games. And uh, this is the place that it all happened, or at least that it all began.